Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Kemaford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, out engage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. How much truth do you tell? The whole truth, the partial truth, the preferred truth. I've been noticing how uncomfortable truth can be for people to hear. And I'm getting really curious as to why we lie so often. When did it become not okay to say what was really going on? When did we start dancing around our needs, our truth, our beliefs? Did it really make us more safe? Enable us to belong? Enable us to matter? I reread recently uh, Neil Donald Walsh's Conversations with God, part two, and I really liked the way he laid out the five levels of truth telling. So let's go through them. I invite you to take what I call the truth challenge. <laughs> and I think if you spend one week telling only the truth, you'll find it so liberating that you'll want to do it for another week and another, and maybe even the rest of your life. And I've been experimenting with this and I found it tremendously freeing. Now, first though, a disclaimer. We don't tell a truth that intentionally hurts another person. So if a friend says, do I look fat in these jeans? You have a choice, right? If you think it's true, you can say, yep, you sure do. Or you can say, you know, those black pants are far more flattering on you. Or you look awesome in skirts or whatever is honest, but isn't going to crush your friend's self-image. Hi, I'm Christine Comerford of Smart Tribes Institute, and I'd love to invite you to Culture Camp. Create the culture of your dreams, learn neuroscience for optimal engagement, optimal performance, recruiting, and retention. We're going to have a super cool full day and then half day, followed by six follow-up group coaching sessions of 90 minutes each. Who should attend Culture Camp? People, talent, HR leaders, cultural influencers who want to really create increased engagement, people performance, faster recruiting, greater retention. And what's cool is that as you learn all the tools and techniques that over a thousand companies have used to benefit, you're going to really understand how to create that intrinsic motivation and a culture where people say, thank God it's Monday. You're going to get very practical tools, very practical techniques, and you're going to build a cool network of fellow travelers, if you will, who are doing the same thing at their own company. So join us at Culture Camp. We can't wait to see you there. So here's some ways that you can tell the truth, ranked from the easiest, in my experience, see what yours is, to the more challenging. Number one, Tell the truth to yourself about yourself. This is where we really admit what is or isn't working for us, who we really are, what we really need, what is crushing our soul, what changes we need to make, what we truly believe and are willing to stand up for, even to live and die for. I recently told myself that I need more vacations and downtime. I love my work so much that I can overdo it. And then I get tired and crabby and not as much fun to be around. So I told my team. They were of course jubilant <laughs> and are now holding me to this truth. And when I try to be superwoman, then they can say, hey, that's not how it's going to be. They're helping me honor my truth and I love it. Number two, tell the truth to yourself about another. This is where we cop to who a person really is what they are and aren't capable of or comfortable with, where they can and cannot show up for us, where we feel connected to them or not, whether they have our back or not, you get the idea. 
I recently re-decided to accept people exactly as they are. I had decided this on August 15th, 2005, but I had backslided to tell you the truth. <laughs> and now I've recommitted. People get to be who they are. I have to pay attention and notice who they are because they're telling me who they are. And then their behaviors tell people or will tell you who they are. And I get to accept them fully or choose to not hang out with them. Ah, isn't that simple? It's so much simpler than wishing that people would change. Number three, tell the truth about yourself to another. Ooh, this is about being seen, standing on who you are, being okay, not being perfect. Whatever perfect means, who knows? I once had a hospice patient in my volunteer work that was struggling with letting go and accepting her dying process. And this was surprising to me as she was the wife of a minister. And I had assumed that she was totally at peace with her creator and with dying, but she wasn't. So I created a subtle opening one day for her to share her experience. She really saw herself as a very together woman who didn't speak about her feelings. And after some talking around the topic, she looked me in the eye and said she had neither peace about how she had lived her life, nor peace about her rapidly approaching death. Whoa, and that's when everything changed for her. We worked through this together, and when she did die, five weeks later, she was ready. She was grateful, she was peaceful, and she felt complete. Number four, tell the truth about another to another. And this is where I wanna stress kindness and acceptance of one's humanity, right? Blind spots, <laughs> we all have them. So we can be both truthful and sensitive. We don't need to tell a truth that doesn't add value, right? This truth telling can decline rapidly into gossip. Rather, when I realized that I had been expecting a junior team member to take on huge challenges that he wasn't capable of, that weren't even appropriate for him to take on, that were too risky, I simply told his leader this. Previously, I'd been encouraging his leader to stretch him. But once I really looked at him, I saw that I was doing him a disservice. He wasn't ready. Number five, tell the truth to everyone about everything. This involves being straightforward, kind, giving yourself a moment to gather your thoughts before speaking if need be. I know, not entirely popular, especially in the talk or be talked over cultures that some of us spend time in, but pausing is a gift to yourself. Just like saying, let me think about that and get back to you. So all the types of truth telling require courage. It takes guts to speak your truth and to have this degree of courage requires commitment. And it has to really matter to you to follow through on truth telling. And to have this level of commitment requires love. And I find that when a leader, a parent, a friend, a human being loves enough, they will be committed because love makes us courageous because love is the most powerful force in the universe. What would it be like for you to tell the truth, all five types, just for a week? If you're curious about truth telling, if you're curious about really getting to know yourself more deeply, feel free to join us at beyondyourbrain.com. It's our annual retreat, beyondyourbrain.com. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there, and please tell your friends.